good morning, uh, Ms. Gontia and uh, Mr. Shiva for granting us uh, the opportunity to interview both of you here in Siem Reap at uh, Uncle Grace uh, Restaurant and Wellness Resort, sir and ma'am. Uh, sir, um, you know, this uh, hotel, you know, especially with the name wellness in it, you also focus on, you know, a very, very, let's say, not, not a new term, but a term that interests people, wellness. So what do you mean by wellness, sir? For example, you mean wellness in terms of, uh, you know, a good sleep, mm. wellness in terms of uh, a good stay, wellness in terms of good food. In this term, sir, what, what do you mean? Oh, man, yes. Good sleep, good eating, running, all the physical exercises, meditation is wellness. But what we are offering over here is a holistic approach. Mm -hmm. We are holistically integrating all these aspects of wellness into one. And this is what we call holistic wellness approach, right? So we are holistically doing all the things to, for the betterment of our life as humans. We should eat good, we should eat healthy, we should uh, exercise much more enough. So all, all these aspects all together are wellness. It's a holistic approach. It's an integrated approach. We have different services. We offer different variety of services over here from physically, physical fit at Meru Center, uh, yoga center for mental and emotional well-being, uh, sound healing at the Amazing Grace. So we have different variety of options and services for wellness. We believe that wellness is our birthright. Yes. Every human should know how to live well. And what we are doing over here is giving this approach and practices to humans mm. to live well. So all the guests who come here, we try to give them this feeling to live their best life. Yes. Yes, sir, but for example, comparing to other hotel, you know, you all, they also have the gym, <laughs> they also have the yoga, the pool. So, but, but they will do it by themselves. So at Uncle Grace, you know, you offer them the facility, but also the correct technique to use them. Exactly. So we have specialists, uh, experts. Yeah. So we, we do body assessment when the guest comes to us. And in that assessment, with the help of the experts, we try to see what is good for them and what not. So this is one of the major uh, concepts which is happening is many people are offering wellness but not with the expert guidance not with the specialists mm. to properly see how they the guests should do mm. and which practices is good for them which practice is not so it's like uh, they can be well they can be well by themselves mm. yeah, but you know if they have the technique from the specialist it can be a bit more efficient, effective. That's what you mean, sir. Exactly. Like when you were born, yep. uh, you could have learned to walk by yourself. Yeah. But, but maybe yeah. your grandma and mom taught you how to walk, right? Mm. In the same way, we need expert guidance in everything. Yes, Someone who has experienced it by themselves and they can show you a better way to do it. Yes, sir. So can you tell us a bit about, you know, some of the approach that you, you said the expert approach? that you offer to your guests and um, you know especially the, the crystal bowl that you know quite new to Cambodia mm -hmm. you know in addition to the gong let's say sir so. yes yeah I would uh, invite Ms. Sokontia to answer this yeah, yeah. Uh, at Uncle Crest we create a wellness program for all age mm. yeah so we have Meru team which is more specialized on the body assessment we have Om Yoga we have Kundu Kid Center, mm. we have spa, and we have also our Crest Cafe for nutrition, and also we have our clinic. clinic. One, yes, oh. we also have a clinic. So back to your question that Crystal Bowl is the sound healing session, mm. which is we have uh, also the session for a client and also the education. Yes. Yeah. We give them training and certificate as well. For example, you want to learn how to do crystal bowl sound healing on yourself or on someone else. So we will train you how to do it with our expert guidance and we also have certificated course in them. Yeah. Yes, yes, sir. But you know, your wellness approach, um, you know, is it only for, let's say, different type of people, you know, young and old differently, middle age? 
young or say like a female or male something like that i think mm. uh, we we offer wellness to all age people yeah. all variety of people male yes. female we have different activities yes we have kid activity like kid yoga mm. kid massage kid mental art kid day care we also like have a uh, kid yoga and adult yoga with the chair yoga mm. and which is for the different yoga mobility for the different level and for the massage also we have a massage for kid and a massage for the adult with that we have a family consultation and yes. we have a family boot camp so that all the package that we create is for all age mm. yeah, everyone really... is welcome and everyone as uh uh they and we are ready to to implement this yes. wellness package to them yeah for so example we we recently had a, a family coming mm -hmm. so they had children they had parents and also the grandparents also three generations three yes. generations and we took care of three generations with mm -hmm. different wellness practices which we offered them they enjoyed their stay yes sir, but you know from what i can see in in our society is that you know hotels are normally just a, a place to stay you know you stay at night mm -hmm. you know if you go somewhere you stay at night and then in the morning you know you can find you know pleasure or nature outdoor and also you know for some people you know when when they mention like spa or something like that they only go to spa because they want to you know get only the spa so in this hotel you do both accommodation mm -hmm. and also the wellness Practices. Uh, practices at the same exactly. time. Exactly. Yeah, we do all the wellness practices. This is the whole concept. The concept is of wellness in the hotel, and we we approach not just as a vacation and a holiday, but also trying to share the practices what we have learned as experts in these fields to give it to them when they go back. Uh, to their home country or where wherever they are coming from they take these techniques and practices with them and sometimes we also take the follow up that how they are doing mm -hmm. if they so, so it's like a program yes it's like it's a like, program okay. yes is, yeah okay. yes sir and it, especially inside the web page i saw that you mentioned you got inspired by on korean vibe something like that the community <laughs> the nature because that is what most people describe onko mm -hmm. onko of course is the culture mm -hmm. but the people is also mm -hmm. very important and nature sir so what do you mean by you get inspired from onko is it inspired by the design inspired by the medicinal practice of the local people of onko can can you elaborate more on that sir uh, definitely we inspire from the rich heritage of angkorian Ang culture yes, and our ancestors uh, also the landscape and the nature uh, to elaborate it a little bit it's very it's very like cm reef was the epicenter of healing yeah. this is mm. presented in many documentaries that cm reef was the epicenter of healing uh, especially in southeast asia and asia many people from different countries they used to come here for their healing we had more than 104 hospitals the major one was nyakpon as the treatment place we had four major universities the major was was prekan right so in this aspect what we are trying to do is we are trying to bring those traditional therapies into existence over here and trying to collaborate it with the contempt contemporary world and the global practices which are done these days to bring them and integrate them together mm -hmm. and especially you are seeing the nature around we are trying to bring all these approaches from those ancient times and build up the concept of wellness here in cm reap we believe that we can reclaim cm reap as the healing center of the world again and we would like to invite our local community in cm reap to support us in this mission mm. yes sir but do you also incorporate you know local medicinal plan for your you know healing process exactly or maybe you know maybe local mindset or something like that you know the, the mindset of okay let's take it slow in cm reap you know mm -hmm. do you also incorporate <laughs> that? that's very yeah. nice yeah. yeah whenever you come to cm reap you feel slow and yeah, quiet yeah you don't have to go fast you, yeah. even though you drive you drive slowly <laughs> slow. yeah not, not like knuppeng no you're not rushing mm. yes, yes. Uh, i think so we one to answer your question 
the two major things we implement from that time is mindfulness meditation which we call samadhi ayurveda the concept of ayurveda ayurveda means the knowledge mm-hmm. of life ayur mm-hmm. means the life and veda means the knowledge of life mm-hmm. so the knowledge of life how so first if you if you go to a ayurveda practitioner and an expert in ayurveda they would give you a lifestyle pattern they will ask you how is your lifestyle mm-hmm. how do you live what do you do what time do you wake up how do you eat what do you eat so they try to change your lifestyle first then second is the treatment with the herbs mm. and then the third is the treatment with massages yeah. we mm. offer one special technique called sherodhara in which you are just laying down and the warm oil is drizzling on your third eye space over here and it calms you down and we also offer kurukumar in mahalaya spa yes. which i would ask miss kunthia to talk yeah. to you about as uh, you are aware of about crook mai right when you listen to the word crook mai that means something is from our original uh, ancestor yes. yeah and in here we bring back the crook mai techniques which is we work on your abdominal to release your stress and we do the combination between the herb that all we have all the khmai herb so we dig down back from the crook mai techniques to put in here at on yes. yes yeah so that the same time the traditional uh, khmai healing and uh, co- uh, combination with the uh, global healing together so to make sure that all our guests feel that connected to this place siem reap yes sir hmm. but sir uh, another or may another question you know because um, you know when globalization increases of mm. course it's you know an inevitable uh, let's say thing that people will have more responsibility mm. people will have more things to work on you know ambition of course i mean for some it can be a bad thing but you know it can be a good thing at the same time it's like yin yang yeah so you know it is common that in the western world you know more people are stressed yes you know and more people need therapy Mm. Uh, I don't have the scientific uh, the, the the exact number but it is like that you know mm. because people work a lot so do you think that you know Cambodia is on that same trajectory and if Siem Reap is on uh, no sorry not Siem Reap but Cambodia is on that uh, same trajectory <coughs> people will work more but do you think that people will need more of this service in the future sir work more but also calm down more at the same time uh, as you said the yin yang Yeah. we we call it in sanskrit hatha have you heard of hat bran hat this term hat bran yeah hat bran yes, yes. Yeah. Okay. so this word yeah. is hatha which means oh. sun and the moon sun. yin yes. and yang right mm. so in the same way you need work and life balance mm. and mm. that is what we are missing in these times especially in the bigger cities people are not having a work life balance they're working 10 hours a day yes yes and not living their life properly as mm-hmm. soon as they come home they just go back to sleep yes yes Or, it means that they they sleep only for the sake of sleeping sir yes mm-hmm. not not to get quality sleep exactly yep, yes mm-hmm. so yes of course all these all these uh, problems are arising yes, i call it the rat race like people <laughs> are living in the rat race they're trying to just rush to do work but there's no proper work life balance right so many people come to our resort especially i would try to give you an example of a, of a lady who came recently for a week she intended to stay for a week and ended up staying for 5 weeks or 6 weeks mm-hmm. somewhere there because uh, this is what we are giving we are trying to incorporate wellness in their lifestyles yes. and when they go back they take it back with them and yeah it's it's i think it's very important to 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 see that wellness is our birthright as i said before yes, to every human to know that we have to live properly every mm-hmm. guest who comes here we try to give them those practices that they can take them back with them and then we take a follow up from them how they're doing and if they need any time our assistance or help we are there for them yes sir and you are the yoga manager so you specialize in yoga so uh, you know what what does taking things slow means to you because you know 
let's say you know some people they live in the village mm -hmm. yes they can work hard on the rice field but yes. you know after the work they do slow it you know they slow their life down yes so just a, you know maybe like a, a medical question or philosophical question <laughs> What do you mean when, when, when you say take things slowly, sir, especially in this environment of Uncle Grace, sir? I think uh, doing anything mindfully. Mm. Mindfully. Huh? Mindful movement. Now we are walking, we are walking mindfully, slowly, yes, sir. Trying, to, trying to talk at the same time. <laughs> so everything doing mindfully and with an intention. It's very mm. important. If we are doing different work with different, like, ta ta ta, mind is full of, very hectic, hectic and yeah. questions and answers and thoughts so many thoughts then we can't be mindful so we have to apply meditation in our everyday life we have to apply anything which helps you in mindfulness either it can be going to a pagoda and yes. listening to the monks chanting mm. it can be going to a lake and having that time of self-love i call it the time of self-love yes, yes it's yes. like uh, for me Yoga practice, I every day, it's been many years, I do my practice in the morning. And this practice, I don't feel it is a task. Though, oh, I have to wake up early in the morning and do it. But mm. instead, I feel it that it is a practice of self-love. This is the time when I will be with myself and can take care of myself. So that concept of having this time for myself is very important. Yes. Uh, for I think for every individual to have this self-love time. Yes, sir. Because normally, uh, of course, it's not generalized. But, you know, spending the money on, let's say, medicine or vitamin, when you can have, you know, this vitamin from nature, from the sun. So, yes, yes. So yes. it's also a, a way of healing. I, I say, uh, I, there's a saying that you, you put all your time to earn money in this time of life and then in the end you spend this time on your own health so why not to take care of your health mm -hmm. at the same time when you're working and uh, growing up in your career as an individual it's also very important to have this time for yourself otherwise all this savings whatever you're doing <laughs> again, on, yes. on, on, on our head you know to to to, to heal mm -hmm. your yourself yes exactly. you are right so people after coming here, they they feel like they learn something. They not not to like learn it academically, but they learn how to take care of themselves differently. That's it. Yes. Yes. In, in what way, if if you can mention that? Uh, let me give you an example. You want to do meditation, for example. Yes. yes. And uh, you want to learn about meditation. You will start going to online channels and mm. start doing. Uh, start learning meditation from all the resources what you get yes, or you come here to properly give your time to this with experts and those experts they assess you hmm. they ask you different questions they ask you questions like how do you sleep how do you live your life what is your work how do you work and then they give you guidance that what kind of meditation technique can be good for you Right. So all the seven, uh, uh, facility. Well, yes, yeah. seven yes. facility of the wellness, you will have a chance to see and consult. You will receive a consultation with our specialist, so mm. that if you are feel comfortable with the gym, with yoga, or with oh. spa, so that we are doing like scanning, yeah. we do what your body talk to us. Yes. And then <laughs> they don't need to do all of it. No, no, no. Only, only part of it. Uh, yeah. It's a part of it, so that we can find what is your uh, uh, not balancing between mm. uh, show between body and the mind. mind. Yeah, yeah. So what we work is with these three big component, right? Yes. So that uh, if you go to, for example, if you go to spa, and then we found that uh, you have a lower back pain. We release your lower back pain, but you will go back with the exercise. Yes. We keep your contact and then we will keep follow up that. That is the practicing for day by day. And there is some advice back to you when you back home that you have to change some uh, movement or change some activity regarding to the, your question, uh, last question also, yes. right? Yes. That when you're busy with daily life, you forget about yourself. Yes, yes, yes. And one thing that we found 
most of the people that come to our place, they are rejecting their uh, younger action. When they was mm. young, you were so enjoy, like yes, the kids yes. here. They enjoy, they don't think anything. But when they come to the adult, we have too much tasks every day. Yes, yes, and then yes. we don't enjoy what we were. Yes. So this is one of the tips also that, okay, would you mind to go back and find yourself when you was young? What is the most be happy moment? Again. Yeah, be playful, be playful again. again. Yes, yes. So that it comes to the wellness too, the yes. wellness uh, practicing. Yes. Yep. And I would just highlight some point. We yeah. have all the services. Yes. Oh. So it's not that uh, they have to do this, they have to do this. They, they can choose. choose it by themselves. And we can recommend. And then yeah. we recommend practices in there. Like, uh, for example, for domestic tourists, they are more familiar, aligned with the traditional culture. Mm. Monk blessing, monk chanting, or meditation. But on other side, we have also the foreign tourists, mm. which is their more familiar with the global wellness, mindfulness, yoga, Reiki, or Chinese medicine, exactly. Ayurvedic. But at on Congress, if you are choosing to be here, not only your stay, but we taking care of your well-being mm. through our service. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. But, uh, you know, again, in the webpage, you mentioned about the COVID-19 impact. Yes. And uh, of course, uh, it's, it's gone now gone in terms of you know the the pandemic uh thing but you know the impact that it left on the people i think still endure yes mm, so yes. what what do you mean by you know after the pandemic people are more aware about about their awareness because again you know the pandemic impact both politically economically but mm. you know people don't really mention you know <laughs> it, its impact on awareness so, yeah. so what is your your, your uh, input on that? i think this is just a time to to be aware, right? So after yeah. COVID-19, what came into power was the awareness. Mm -hmm. People were in lockdowns. They tried mm -hmm. to get to know more about the mental health when they were not doing well, when they were locked up in the space, right? In the same way, uh, people try, uh, started washing hands all the time. <laughs> it is also a wellness <laughs> practice. That is a very, very interesting. People forget about it, but, yes. but it, 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 it's yes. there. Yeah. And then people are not, unable to sleep when they're locked down in the home all the time on their screens. So they get aware that, oh, it's not the time to be on the screen. It's time to sleep. Mm. Until and unless they do a physical work, they can't have a proper sleep. So it's very important to do hot brand, to do body exercises, yoga, yoga, running, whatsoever. So when people, I, I believe when people were locked down, they get more aware of these things. Mm -hmm. And uh, especially after COVID, people started focusing on wellness retreats more. Yes, the hotels which are based on wellness more than ever before. Because now they know that they want to go to a vacation. But they also know that they want to go to a wellness vacation mm -hmm. where they can do different kind of wellness activities yes, all together. Yes, sir. And also maybe my last question, because, you know, society, socially, Siem Reap has always been a place, let's say, you know, for retiree. Yes, Cambodian, yes. Cambodian, you know, foreigners, mm -hmm. uh, especially Cambodian people, when they get older, they want the land, they want a house and they want to get healed by the environment of Siem Reap, so chicken, cow, you know, bird. Yes, yes. <laughs> so, 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 so now, now you create also the same facility that, you know, the old people have been more or less doing for generations. Sir. Mm -hmm. So do you think that Siem Reap should be a place where people come and, you know, like a hospital you know, mm -hmm. to, to feel mm -hmm. calm, you know, because when people come to Siem Reap, okay, I want to visit the temple. Mm -hmm. I want mm -hmm. to go to the pub street, the nightclub. But not many people say, okay, I want to come to Siem Reap and sleep. <laughs> so is that what you want to send a message, sir? Siem Reap can be a good place to calm your dog. In you my, uh, thank you for this question. I would yeah. love to answer this question because it's personal. Oh, personal. Yeah. Yes. So I believe that Siem Reap, you, don't, you never decide to go to Siem Reap. Siem Reap calls you. Okay. Siem Reap calls you for healing. That's what I believe. Uh, in my personal experience, I came here for two weeks, mm. six years ago. Six years ago. Okay. <laughs> and I ended up staying six years. I only came for two weeks. Mm. When I came here, 
I felt so nice. Everything was calm. Only there's some little area of up street as yes, you mentioned. Yes, yes. But all around CM Reap, after that is calmness, quietness. All the people are smiling. And we believe that Angkor is a doctor, uh, for sure. Uh, and as I said, it can only be experienced. I cannot explain this yeah. with my words. I see, I see. It can only be experienced when people come to CM Reap. They go to the temple area, the quietness, the calmness they feel is very different feeling and only experienced by going there. Mm -hmm. So it's a, it's a beautiful place, uh, beautiful people, nice nature around. Uh, there's a rule, I think, that no building is taller than Angkor Wat. Yes, yes. So there are no high buildings, all the buildings are down. You can see the sunrise and sunset Everything from most of the places. Human size. Exactly, human size. exactly. So it's a, it's a beautiful feeling to call it my home. <laughs> and uh, as I said before, it's the epicenter of the healing. Yeah. And we want to reclaim that CM Reap is the epicenter of healing and people come back. And yeah, it's it, this is my feeling. I would like to ask Sukuntia. But... Yes, as uh, you know, you we are Cambodian people. I think that uh, we don't wait until we are getting retired to move here. Yes. Exactly like, uh, okay, well, my example, like I'm from Kompong Cham. And it first visit to Siem Reap, the, the first step that I step to the temple, it's already healing me. Mm -hmm. So even about the, the hospital, Uncle Wat one of the big hospital that healing my mind, calm down. So I forget what is the, where I stand right now, when at the moment when I enter to Uncle Wat. So that, my goal has been changed. We decide to come to live here. And many people more that from other province that uh, they are keep moving to live in Simrip. First, I found that it's a place for healing. Mm -hmm. Second, it's a peaceful place where to live. Mm -hmm. And right now, what I can say, it's very good place for my kids. <coughs> Yeah. Even young people need calm, yes. calm, calming down. Yes. Right? This is what I wanted to mention yeah. is uh, you said for retiring people, <laughs> but I think people. for all age people. Yeah. Young kids also need yeah. vacation. Exactly. No, uh, as you mentioned the first that when you come to Siem Reap at the moment, you have to slow down even yeah. to try, even you walk, even yeah. the way of you come with work also, it has to a little bit calm down mm -hmm. so that the moment of you calm down, that is your wellness. Mm -hmm. That is your wellness, yeah, your yes. mental wellness. When you are very busy with your work, you already escape your, your mental wellness. So the moment you come to Siem Reap, it's very helpful. Like on the weekend, I bring my kid to Uncle Ward. So that moment is, they are really like, shh. Everything is, yeah. Yeah, every, every worry is uh, put, put aside. Yeah. Yeah. So it's a kind of energy healing place so that we really proud to be here. Yes, yes, mm. yeah. yes. And also, sir, because uh, now we are in the showroom, mm. you know, at first it's not a bowl for soup, no. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's not for any food, yeah. but it is the bowl that creates sound. Yes. So uh, I think this concept is a bit new, not, not a, yeah, quite new to Cambodia. Is that what? What do you mean by sound healing? Yes, but in this case, it's not the, the music that is from the speaker, mm. but yes. it is the music that is from nature. Nature. So, can you tell us a bit, sir, like, what do you mean by before? By, you know, before me explaining that to you, I would like to ask you a question. Okay. When you go to the seaside and you listen to the waves, how do you feel? Uh, you're asking a person who loves the wave. Yes. 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 Uh, yes. It sounds that you don't want to go back home. Yes. Yeah. How do you feel when it rains and you are in nature? You just want to sleep. Yeah. So you answered first question, which was yours, that sound can heal. Mm -hmm. And sound, every sound has a frequency, right? So these bowls are made up of uh, special minerals and rocks yes. from all over the world. And, uh, and once they are made, then the sound is determined. Like we have Do, Re, Mi, Fa. The notes, right? Yes, sir. In Sanskrit, we have Sa, Re, Gama, Pa, Dha, Nisa. 
so these nodes are determined from after the bowl is made so specific bowls specific nodes are for specific energy channels in the body what we believe are called chakras yes, have you sir. heard of it uh in in some way yes yes, yes. so these chakras for example there's a solar plexus so there's the sound of d which we play then it is very good for the will power of a human being so so can you make a sound a bit so maybe yes, people yes. are eager to 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 listen to that. of course of course okay then it goes on and on it doesn't stops it takes some time so how do you use this one to to make people feel better let's say so mostly there are two kinds of approaches to this one approach is individual approach when someone comes for a private sound healing for example so in that way <coughs> we we assess them we ask them questions and we see what they need which kind of note do they need and then we play those notes for them to give them the healing according to their purpose of sound healing right mm -hmm. and then there are group classes in which we do general sound healing in which we play all the different bowls a few times for example you as a guest you would come and just lay down we will put a, a pad of rice on your eyes and mm -hmm. some herbs and you are just laying down we'll give you a blanket you are in the space laying down and we will just play for you and you will experience something between sleep and meditation mm -hmm. you will experience that you're not deeply Literally. sleeping but you're not also awake mm -hmm. because the frequency is working the healing is happening in you that are time. in between yes almost sleep and you mean like no. subconsciously yes awake. exactly yeah exactly so you said that you know the bowl resonate with the frequency of your body what what do you mean by that like because i don't think many people would understand the use of this maybe before they come you know and uh many cambodian people know this before from your experience i think so uh, all the cultures in the world have yeah. sound healing in different ways mm -hmm. for example cambodian uh, in cambodian heritage we had yeah, the kong kong yes right so that is also sound healing every human is producing energy if i want to lift up my hand i'm producing some energy and bringing up my hand right so it's a vibration some frequency which happens mm -hmm. uh so in the same way we are trying to build up that frequency and vibration in the sound bowls play them and connect it to the frequency of the body of a human mm -hmm. and then try to heal them yes sir but i saw the technique just now you hit it and then you spin it and and the sound actually different <laughs> become louder yes yes so so is that like a, the technique that you keep people subconsciously awake something like that i would say the more you play yes. the more it becomes louder and louder and louder the sound in my visuals it comes like this it grows and grows and grows until i stop it there so it it yeah of course there are different techniques and we we offer sound healing training over here so people can come over here and learn how to do the sound healing by themselves so it's a training we have to go through a, a specific time for 1 to 6 months uh, for a special training but you can come for a day or two to do general sound healing training here and and learn how to do it and you also mentioned that you listen to their breath rate yes frequency of their their body movement something like that exactly so when they come we do that assessment we ask them questions mm -hmm. we ask them how's their emotions in this particular time how's their work everything and then we also see their breath breathing pattern we also see their muscles body fat how much they have 
and then generate uh, a treatment for them. Not just for sound healing, but all the services in different wellness units in Angkor Wat. Well, do you have the, the term for this kind of treatment? It's called crystal bowl sound healing. Crystal bowl sound healing. Yes. Okay. These are specifically crystal bowls. They're different from, from that one, from that crystal. Rock yes. Rock. Yes. Variety. yes. So this is a crystal. This is a crystal rock. So there are different kinds of crystal rocks which by which these these bowls are made. There are different kinds of bowls. There are also Tibetan bowls, metal bowls, but these are specifically crystal bowls. This is this is called the Foster bowls, and these are called the Alchemy bowls. And they are a little bit bit different than them, and very special in their sound. And the color is. Directly from the crystal. Yeah. Like exactly. Not Nature. No. Added. No. 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 Okay. Okay. So thank you, Mr. Shiva and uh, Ms. Kunti, for your insightful okay. interview on, of course, uh, the crystal bowl, and you know, which you know relate to the gold in Khmer, but in a different you know material, and of course, uh, the way how Simri can be a doctor, a silent doctor, but a doctor that can heal. Mm -hmm. Forever, yes, and uh, without tiring, you know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yep. So thank you so much, sir. Thank you so much thank for you. your time too. Thank you. Thank you.